shift gears now uh, to hear from some reps from Brattleboro to talk about 535, which is the Brattleboro uh, charter change proposal. So we can certainly hear from one or both of you if you would both like to join us, or you're just here for for here endorsement for and support. I just, I just it gave those for reference, just for some news articles, so it doesn't matter. I'm not actually going to talk necessarily to to those. Those are just for reference, just so, to see the kind of um, news that was put out about them. Yeah. Great. Okay. Thank you for being with us this morning. Thank you, Madam Chair, Representative Molly Burke of Brownsburg, here to speak on 535. Uh, so I'm here to support this charter change, and uh, just to give you a little context, um, on March 5th, 2019, Brattleboro voters approved a proposal to allow 16 and 17 year olds the right to vote, the right to serve as town meeting member, as member of Brattleboro Town School Board, or Brattleboro Union High School, number six board, and to vote on local issues. Two youth members could serve simultaneously on each school board. And this initiative came from a group called Rattleboro Common Sense, a group focused on election reform and other progressive issues, but it was really spearheaded by students. Students really took the lead on this and collected many signatures and went through the whole process and had to jump through a lot of different hoops when they were given different deadlines. And, but anyway, the vote on March 6th was 908 to 408 in favor. Now, uh, oh, I'm sorry, what was it? 908, this is, a, this is at our, so I don't know if, if you know, but Brattleboro has sort of a unique uh, town meeting form. We have on town meeting day, first Tuesday of March, we have town elections where we vote for a select board, school board, uh, et cetera, and for town meeting representatives. So our town meeting, the only one in the state, is a, um, a unique form of, it's sort of like a little mini of a legislature. So it's about 145, 150 members and uh, from the, the three distinct legislative districts. And we convene on the third Saturday in March to vote on school and uh, town budgets. So it's like what, what people would do at a regular town meeting only. And this was, I think, put into effect in 1960, I think, under the, um, the leadership of former Senator Bob Gannett, thinking that this was a, a way for people to participate in a town of 12,000 where it's very, fairly unwieldy to have a, a, a town meeting, a full town meeting. So that's just a little background for that. So on March, so March 5th was this general election, and this was a ballot question on that in the the March 5th election. So this doesn't really have to do with our town meeting, although this bill would allow um, youth to be elected to that body. So the measure was endorsed by the two Wyndham County Senators, all three Brattleboro representatives, all candidates for school board, Lieutenant Governor Zuckerman, and others. <clears throat> and in accordance with the Vermont Statute uh, Title 17, on August 24th, 2018, the Brattleboro Select Board agreed to hold public hearings on a petition that was filed earlier on August 20th to amend the Brattleboro Town Charter to include youth voting at age 16. Public hearings were held on October 2nd and October 9th. And uh, then after, then the, uh, then it was put on the ballot. And uh, the, according to the youth, if you look at some of those uh, links there, they were, one of the things that they were concerned about is that youth pay taxes, a lot of them work. Um, and the youth spoke to the select board and uh, all recent, recent data from the Tax Foundation show that Americans under the age of 18 paid $730 million in income tax in 2011. But the other thing that they were really um, sort of concerned about and that they felt that there was sort of a problem with apathy in the town, a lot of older voters who don't care about politics and they don't feel like they have enough time to even bother to going to town meetings or attend the school board and they felt that they, 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 as youth, were very involved and wanted to be involved and wanted to participate. Um, ratifying this amendment would make Brattleboro the first town in the state to lower the voting age, but not the first in the country. A handful of towns have already lowered it. States like Oregon and California lawmakers introduced bills. 
uh, in 2015, the town voted against the amendment by a two to one margin. And a lot of the opposition was rooted in questions about how something like this would work. And also, I think at that time, they were receiving um, an opinion, legal opinion, that it would violate the Constitution because of the um, issue of the voters' oath. But our crack legal expert, Betsy Ann, has um, addressed that issue and said that it's uh, really a policy question within legislative control and that the uh, Vermont Constitution does not, and she can talk more about that, does not uh, have purview over local local elections. So um, that's all I have to say. I have my two other, we have three distinct legislative districts in Brattleboro, a town of 12,000. Fits neatly into the 4,000 uh, ideal number for representation. And we are all here supporting it. And hope that you will look favorably to upon this. Questions? Committee. Rob. Um, I have a couple. One. Um, the math is it looks like about 1,300 people or so actually voted on this. Is that? Yeah, 908 to 408. That was and how many registered voters in Brattleboro? Two thousand. No, sorry, that's in my legislative district. Um, let's see, about six, like half the half the population. Yeah, I was going to say something like about six thousand. Yeah. So. About 6,000 out of 12,000 residents. 6,000 right, maybe registered voters. Okay. Um, in our last primary election, I probably remember, what was the, uh, the the voter turnout? I'm trying to think what the voter um, turnout was. It would be pretty low if that's all the voted on, wouldn't it be? Well, for that election. I'm, I'm just saying in general, like in primary elections, the, the, you know, the number of people who generally vote. I can't remember now. I'm sorry. I just want to I think this may be a Betsy Ann question. Is it? My recollection that if, if these folks are given the, the right to vote, then they're also given the right to hold elected office as well? Yes, that's true. Okay, yeah. so theoretically you could have a 16-year-old run for an elected position and get elected and, have, and be allowed to serve, right? We had a 13-year-old running for governor, right? Yeah, but he couldn't yeah. serve if he won. Right. Thank you. Yeah. So if I understand the charter change, this is also on school voting? Yes. So um, <clears throat> I, mean, I have no idea how a 16 or 17 year old would vote, but you know, I guess you could um, come up with different scenarios that different age groups might vote differently than the average. You know, I, I don't know. I'm just putting it out there. Um, and with school budgets being um, sort of uh, the way our funding formula is state funded and then some local portion. Um, how would I address a constituent in my town or my district that in a small way might be if you spent more uh, be subsidizing um, school spending in Broward World? I'm not sure how to answer that question without some forethought. No, I just, you know, it, it's uh, one of the things oh, that Tristan we'll, has a... Representative Tristan Salino, for the record. Um, <coughs> uh, so, I think that the fundamental question is that, you know, uh, is there some different way that a 16 or 17 year old's influence and impact on democracy is judged with a different standard than somebody who's over 18, especially since we know that some of them are, in fact, taxpayers. Uh, because I would answer the question very simply, like, you know, anybody who is legally able to vote has a chance to influence the system that they're in through their votes. And that, that's what the foundation of participatory democracy is. And we're just, we've allowed for the limited access to certain kinds of decision making from a younger population because we believe it will help us make better decisions. And there's lots of shared governance models with young people involved in decision making. The University of Vermont has student trustees. There's a, a high school person on the State Board of Education that makes probably more impactful decision 
uh, around merged districts and other things on tax rates than just about anybody in the state <laughs> able to influence, um, and they're not over the age of 18. Um, so I think we have other examples of this through our system. And I just would I would focus on the value, uh, the values piece, which is getting an engaged citizenry um, to, to participate. Yeah, and, and I appreciate that. I just, it, it's a broader conversation. And I, I think, you know, I think we try to be sensitive to what local communities are bringing forth to us, you know, through a vote, even though it's a, only a percentage of their voters. Um, nonetheless, that's our system. Um, but we're, we're, you talk about legal aid, we're, we're, you're asking us to change the legal aid requirement for, you know, a, a subset of issues that they might be um, voting on, and then, if, but if the next community comes to us and says we'd like to change it to 14, um, you know, why should we say no to that? Um, and additionally, um, you know, we're talking about voters of legal age, but then we heard the health commissioner yesterday talk about the brain a young person not being fully developed until age 25. So, I mean, how do you balance all that, too? So, I mean, I think you and I would agree, two-year-old is not the right age to start a vote. Um, but so where do you draw that right line? We've chosen in our Constitution to <coughs> draw it at 18. For statewide. Okay. Right. It doesn't, it doesn't, as we said, this Constitution doesn't speak to the municipal Local. rules because we're, that's our, our legislative okay. And we've given legislative authority through the State Board of Ed to a, a, a younger person mm -hmm. to make impactful decisions on the state education system. So we, we have already, in some ways, said that there's some capacity there. We've changed that line. We don't have a hard and fast line at 18. Um, we have a soft line of our own. Most two-year-olds I know are ruthless dictators, so I don't know what I've got Bob, Hal, Mike, JP. Bob. Oh, did you say oh, Rob, sorry. Rob. Sorry. I did say um, Bob. I meant to say Rob. It's okay. Um, it just call him Crispy. It's kind of a, a Crispy. <laughs> <laughs> that was a mistake. Um, uh, it's more of a question, I guess, to Kristen. Is, is those positions that you had uh, referred to, are those voting or non voting? Because any boards that I've been on, that there was, say, folks under the age of 18, which are school boards and stuff. They were all non-voting positions. I'm not sure. Uh, at UVM, they're full voting members. Okay. Um, and now they're, they, and I don't think it requires that they're 18. They, it's when they get elected as a student. Is the position on the state board? I do not position? know about whether the state board position is a voting. I I believe it. I thought it was because I thought I remembered that that person had voted on the merged plan at the end of uh, the halfway six cycle, but I'm. I, Absolutely not a position to say. Okay. Oh, sure. Great. Thank you. All right. Um, how? So I support this charter amendment, and what I think it really um, gets at, it, it, it teaches young people to really get involved with the uh, democratic process. I think it's a challenge for 18-year-olds who um, end up going off to college um, so they're 18, they, do they vote? Maybe, maybe not, but I think this is a, a way to teach young people to be involved and that their voice counts. And I'd just like to add that um, these um, the sort of people who are at the forefront of, of getting this resolution, it was, it was the youth. They were, at, they were at the primaries collecting signatures. They were at the co-op collecting signatures. They were very, very engaged, and, and they want to be engaged. And I think we really want to encourage that kind of engagement. We've seen, you know, drop off in civic civic engagement among adults. So to, to see this was very, very inspiring. And I think the vote in the town really reflected that people recognized that it was a, a real, they were just like, yeah, yeah, we want to vote. They were very, very, very knowledgeable in the issues. They learned a lot from doing it. And um, so. Uh, Mike. JP and then Bob. Sure, I'd just like to share my, my support and approval for this as well. Uh, we've seen those those students, we've seen some of them right here who have been wonderfully articulate and dedicated to learn. And I think what we're doing here is similar 
to, uh, to the privileges we give them as drivers. A, this is a graduated process here, and we want to get them into the habit of, of voting and, and starting on local elections. I think when the concerns about uh, brain development and the, and the maturing of the, of the frontal cortex and executive functions comes up, mostly I've heard that talked about when the behaviors are lethal. We want them not driving, smoking, using, using drugs, and making decisions in those regards until they're 25. And, um, I'd like to hope voting is not going to be a lethal <laughs> behavior, but it's something we really want them to, to get in the practice of doing and becoming full citizens here. So I appreciate this and hope this, this can grow. JP? I just wanted to clarify from my own um, gentleman said that 16, 17 year olds on, on their boards are voting members and, and Rob mentions that it's his understanding, I believe is what you said, that 16, 17 year olds on boards are, that you thought 16 and 17 year olds on, on boards were not voting members. Well, any that I've been on, they weren't, but that doesn't mean it applies right. to all. And, and, and that's my understanding, such as like a school board where you have a 16 or 17 year old student or troop that's elected to the board. But I always thought that they could participate in items for, you know, action items for discussion and everything with the board, but they could not vote. The, the, the vote was actually done by the five board members. Is, is that, is my belief of that correct, or? I'm, That's been my understanding and my experience, but again, it could be different depending on what board it is, but that. Okay, and do you, Betsy Ann, do you agree with that, or? I'm not aware of any, uh, I don't know for sure, but I, I'm not aware of any, um, under 18 people who can vote on school boards. I'm not 100% certain. Because this question was recently asked of me <coughs> when when this 16, 17 year old vote was coming up for discussion. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> and again, it was my understanding that they were non voting members, but I had to tell the person I could be wrong, but I would get a chance to research it. And I have to get back to that person. So. We can look into that, see what we can find. Mm -hmm. Nelson. Uh, I served on the SDSU board where there was a student that came in to present what the school was doing uh, in the student environment. I always found him to be articulate, well-versed, and knew what he was doing. And even though he didn't have voting right on our board, he showed extreme intelligence and what was going on in the school system. So I supported this bill. I think we need to get these younger people involved. And every time I've served where there's been younger people involved, it's worked out very well. Jim? So the charter, the Bulls charter also uh, designates up to two youth members to be elected to the uh, school board and the uh, high school board. Um, I'm curious as to why we're, I mean, we, we don't, everywhere else it's voters. Whoever's a voter, whether you're 18 or whether you're 92, can get elected and serve. We don't uh, categorize. So I'm, I'm curious as to why we categor, categorizing here. Does that mean you know, a 17 year old? can't be the third member if the townspeople want to vote him or her in. I'm not sure I understand your question. Okay, so on the, the, the last part, up to two youth members may be elected and defined youth members as 16 and 17. Mm -hmm. So, but I'm not aware of anywhere else we, we categorize any of our voters by age. You mean to say that you know you, so you must have two people over 50 and two people yeah, under 50? Yeah, we don't, we don't do that. Yeah. So why are we doing it? You know, I, I was not party when the resolution was, was, okay. was written. I don't know what the intent was. Um, <laughs> and we might be able to find that out. Uh, I think it was just saying perhaps that they weren't allowed to be on the board. 
and then well, you know, because well, somebody might yeah, say, yeah, yeah, somebody yeah. might yeah. say, oh, well, well, what if we had a school board of all youth? You know, so well, but, but, but it's limiting be, it in a way. <clears throat> I get that. Yeah. Um, but but the voters, I mean, we can elect all kinds of people. We can elect sheriffs even yeah. though they're not certified law enforcement. Tristan. Um, just to follow up on my board of ed statement, uh, let's see how we find the statutory reference. And uh, there are two members appointed, one of whom will be a, can be a, uh, is a voting member, but after the first year of the term of their two-year term. So, and it's there's no age requirement. It's a secondary school students, uh, and it says this student member shall not vote during the first year and shall be a full and voting member during the second year of his or her term. So we already have in this case, given that authority to a secondary student at the State Board of Ed, and they are, that student from St. John's where he was a voting member was voting on the merger plans for Act 46, I believe. Mm -hmm. So impactful, impactful decision, not just. Yeah. Um, I think that in answer to your question, I think we, we could, um, could find that out from uh, our town attorney, whoever was involved. I believe that Paul Gillies was involved in writing this resolution. Emily? Um, I'm like from I just want to add that we have a larger project, I think, in the state of retaining Vermonters and attracting Vermonters. And youth who are connected to their community, the more they're connected to the community, the more likely they are to stay and the more likely they are to return. And so I see this as a really great way of further rooting youth as they're sort of beginning the process that usually leads to disconnection. Any other questions? Marsh. I'll just point out something in H535. It says that two youth members may be elected to the um, school board. So it doesn't say that they have to be, but they may be. <coughs> Ross? How, how large is the school board? Is it the typical five? Uh, okay. But of course now, all that's up in the air too because we don't know what the we don't know what's going to happen sure. with the you know, it's a forced murder right so, you know all bets are off as to what's going to happen it, 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 if that happens will it be more like a nine board member board probably i think so i can't remember and actually what i do know is that brattleboro is going to have equal representation not is not going to have proportional representation <clears throat> we have unified board there's only going to be equal representation among the other towns so there, there will be only two Rattleboro members on that unified board if we have a unified board. Nelson? I, th I think she answered my question. The same thing's happening in my district it, where the schools are merging going to five different commentary, but they're only going to have equal representation, which is two. So I guess the question I, mean, I would ask here, would, you, would this only, if there's two people that could be elected, would they be the two representatives on this board? Or is it up in the air and we don't even I, I don't, you know, I mean, I, this the, this situation was not contemplated when the when the resolution was proposed. You know, this has all been, you know, late breaking developments about, you know, are we going to delay our, our our merger date? Are we going to have? We did vote on a school budget on on town meeting day, so we actually have a school budget for our town. Um, one of the other towns in our district has not voted on their school budget yet. Um, I think did Dummerstone or Vote for theirs. I think I, I'm not sure where we're at, but anyway, we're sort of in limbo right now. So I think that that's a question that would have to be addressed, but I don't think it can be addressed until we. It have would a, be addressed through the articles of agreement between the yeah. municipalities, and you know, it's, it's unknown. It, it's unknown, but I mean, obviously, if there was, if Brattleboro had the capacity to appoint two student members to a or elect two members to a board, but then the board is being redefined, that's going to influence how they negotiate for their whatever their equal representation looks like. But that but that still giving them the capacity to try to do that doesn't mean that that's going to be the part of the plan that emerges in the articles of agreement. It's just. No. Well, this is written specifically, if I read it correctly, for representation on certain school boards. And if those boards no longer exist, that's right. What, 
the authority would almost certainly disappear. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. disappear. If, yeah. if there's something in a charter, and th that entity becomes defunct for some mm -hmm. other reason, then obviously no one can serve on that board. It's not there. It's not there. And perhaps down the road they'll amend the charter to change that, but yeah, so that's up to the, the town of Brown. So it's not like a what if. Yeah. <clears throat> Jim. So Montpelier has a proposed change in who can vote in their local elections, but it specifically doesn't touch the school side of things because they're part of a union district. And I don't remember who Montpelier is in. Roxbury. Roxbury. Roxbury hasn't voted on that. So I, I'm a little bit lost now that you mentioned, I, um, you know, you got an Act 46 merger potentially coming. I, I, I'm lost as to how this impacts it um, when the town or towns that may be joining with you haven't had a chance to vote on this. So I, I guess I, I would I don't think that, I mean, I'm not a legal yeah. expert, and I think we should defer to yeah. legal counsel. I tell, right, so I, I'm not a legal expert either, but I'm going to take a shot at what I think John just said and see if he agrees with me, which is that until there is a, a merger agreement, Broadway can change its own internal rules that that if it's allowing an appointment to boards that go away in the, within the Articles of Agreement or Merge District, then it, it effectively just disappears. It's a, it's a no longer relevant part of the Charter. It doesn't give, um, it, you know, it doesn't uh, substantially impact the other towns in any way. They have an agreement with the town that they've reached on what representation looks like on the board. And the town of Brattleboro can choose its own methodology for putting people on the board. But if the authority is granted for boards that no longer exist, then that authority goes away too. Yeah, no, I think Tristan's right. I mean, I mean if you have a, just to give an example, if you have a Brattleboro school board, and all of a sudden you have a unified school board, then there, there's going to be an agreement as to how that school board should be constituted, who, who's allowed to serve on it, and that would trump anything in the charter, especially the charter would not probably specify a unified school board. I, I mean, I'm not talking about the school board, I'm talking about who can vote in the district. I thought we already well, then, heard that once it crossed town lines, it was no longer local, and that was the provision that was deemed to allow it in the Constitution. And but it would still be governed by the agreement between the towns as to how the school district should be constituted who can vote in the district. Oh, okay. That's, that's great. I think. Are you getting can, 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 can clarification from? <laughs> sure. Let's see. I know uh, co-counsel Tucker, but just uh, to confirm, Representative Harrison, are you asking about the legitimacy of this charter right now, allowing youth members to vote in a school district that crosses town lines? Mm -hmm. My overall analysis is that the legislature if you vote to allow it, would allow it. So it's under your control. What what are you thinking, Tucker? There are two issues here, one that I'll get to later during the walkthrough. The first is whether uh, through a charter amendment approval specific to one municipality, you can allow something extra municipal. And that question cannot be answered until that distinct municipal corporation is developed. So the question would be, when this unified school district is formed, does Brattleboro locally elect representatives that then go to that board, or do they vote directly to the board of that unified municipal corporation? Two different questions that can't be answered until that governmental structure is developed. The second that I will reserve for the walkthrough is how voters is defined here. And that may be problematic not only for those offices that may or may not exist in the future, but also potentially for the intent of this amendment within the confines of Rattleboro. Okay, so I'll clear up all my questions. 
cannot be decided. <laughs> right. Didn't clear in mind. <laughs> so uh, maybe I'm just because this is a school issue theoretically at this particular juncture. I mean, if that I, I don't recall. I mean, if the, if the articles of agreement specify how it can look and should look, that wouldn't be a matter that would come here anyway, right? Well, am I uh, missing something here? Yeah. Um, you know, I think at this point we should move on to the walkthrough yeah. and get the experts um, testifying. You're asking questions that I can't answer. Yeah, I, I think we have the wrong people yeah, trying to answer your questions. Right <laughs> so, I'm I just here to support it, I, I, just I to give you so, a little yeah. background context yeah. and you. to say that I, I hope that you will look favorably on it and, and see it as a positive development for our democracy. Thank you very much. All right. Good morning, Tucker Anderson, the Office of Legislative Counsel. Um, first, I'll say that I'm very excited because it appears as though I have some very interesting research to do. Um, uh, and I will ground my previous comment in an opening statement that is this issue of how uh, local voter qualifications affect the unified school district system is one that is unique that has not been presented so far because the first voter qualification amendment that we have seen explicitly set aside those municipal corporations. So this would be the first instance that we'd be encountering that question. So I apologize if I did not fully answer the questions of the distinguished members, but I promise that research will be done that will clarify those points for you. Um, to begin the walkthrough, we'll start with section 2.1 in the definitions. Uh, the amendment adds a subsection C that defines voters. And the first thing that I will note is that it attempts to define voters for specific elections and for specific offices. However, it does not cite sections of the charter, and it does not open with a clause, for example, that says for purposes of this charter or for purposes of section 6.1 of this charter. And that the term that is being defined, voters, is used throughout the charter outside of the context that is set here. So there could be, and in my legal opinion is, some confusion around where and when these voters will be participating. So subsection C starts by saying, for the purposes of voting at town meetings and serving at representative town meeting, and I will score that the opening clause is for the purpose of voting at town meetings. That is the broadest form here, voting at town meetings. The rest is added in conjunction to those town meeting votes. And serving on the Brattleboro Town School Board, Brattleboro Union High School Number 6 Board, and then here are the qualifications. Shall mean all persons resident in the town who have reached 16 years of age and taken the voters oath. There are three qualifications here for voters as a term that is used throughout the charter. And only because the committee has spent a great deal of time discussing certain voting qualifications in another charter, I will note that it does not require that you are a citizen of the United States. Subsection D. Youth member shall mean a representative town meeting or school board member who has reached 16 years of age, not reached 18 years of age on the day of election, who has taken the voters oath in the oath of office. I believe it was Representative Harrison earlier who noted that this is something that is defined and distinct from voter and is used in instances where youth members would be on school boards. Um, I will pause here to... Oh. Rob, you have a question? 
Well, I, I, the comment that you made about not having to be a citizen of the United States, so does that mean that you could vote in Brattle World's town meeting if you weren't a citizen of the if this charter passes it, that would automatically allow you to vote as long as you met the other criteria? Without giving an affirmative response, while there is an expert five feet to my right, I will say that there are three express qualifications here. And they are resident of the town, 16, taking the voters off. It is silent as to whether you have to be a citizen. There could be a separate question there about whether you could register. So hypothetically, you could have a 16-year-old non-resident run for elected office in Brattleboro and theoretically win and have to serve or be allowed to serve. Non-citizen. Non-citizen, is that what I said? Sorry. Sorry. That's what I meant, thank you. I am not prepared to answer that question because I have not fully vetted the Brattleboro Charter to see whether it has unique voter registration requirements. Um, I don't want to deflect the question, but I'm doing an excellent job of it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think Molly? This is just an opinion, but I don't believe this was part of any of the conversation. I think it was just not thought about. The focus was on the youth vote. And I think that it just wasn't, the intention was not to provide the opportunity for non-citizens. In my recollection, I don't, I don't think there was any discussion of this at all. But I, I wasn't present at all the meetings or anything like that. So. Taking a uh, step back for those questions, one of the reasons that I highlighted the definition of voters and that first clause is that and I will use this just as an example, in section 2.5 of the Brattleboro Charter and in section 4.1, it states that the select board members are elected at large by the voters of the town. And in section 4.1, further states that they are elected at large by voters from among their members. So a voter at town meeting could be elected to the select board my interpretation of how the charter operates would allow a voter who is 16 here to vote for and serve on the select board, among other offices where the voters choose from among their members. Section 2.2 .2 opens with uh, one such clause stating that, and this is already in the charter, that on the meeting day the voters of the town shall elect, so their voters is being used. Subdivision four, union high school directors who shall be elected for terms and in numbers as required by state law. And then there is the amendment here, which is the addition of this clause by the Votes. Voters as defined by subsection 2.1c of this charter. So there's an interesting legal structure here where the term voters is used twice and there is the intent to have a distinct definition in subdivision 4 that is different from the opening clause. Um, All of that is to say that one thing that the committee may want to look at moving forward is um, divining some of the intent here. And then if there is supposed to be a distinct role beyond filling positions, but also with voting rights for youth voters, that that definition be made distinct from the term that is used throughout the charter. Section 6.1 uh, in subsection C here uh, allows up to two youth members uh, to be elected to each 
the Brattleboro Town School Board, Brattleboro Union High School number six, and allows youth members to serve simultaneously on each, so on both <coughs> at the same time. So does, does that mean then that they could only serve on those particular boards in that capacity as opposed to being um, elected to be a representative to their town meeting or on the or I guess on the select board? Could you rephrase your question? I think I need to. Um, so looking at, are we talking about them only being able to serve on the school boards? Or are there other boards and other capacities that they could be elected to and serve? I think that is some of the clarification that needs to come from the town around what the intent is here. The way that the definition is currently structured for voters would allow voters, as they've quoted it, 16 year olds and up to serve on other boards, including the select board. That may have been the intent. And this may have been a clarification that in addition to those boards, that they may also serve on the Brattleboro Town School Board, and they may also serve on Brattleboro Union High School number six board with certain limitations, only two members. Um, there's some investigation. Bob and then Jim. Later in the story, do we get to the point where if there are three seats available and three persons under 18 get elected, what the process is for disqualifying number three? The story is over as far as this amendment is concerned. I am I'm not sure um, what would happen in the case that more than two are elected and how they would go about selecting the two that would fill that limited capacity membership. That's possible under this right if that, there are that number of vacancies up for election. That more than two could be elected. <laughs> Jim and then Nelson. Soon. Following up on that issue, so I mean nothing prevents if there are three seats open, nothing prevents three people under eighteen running. But only two of them can win. Only two and sir. And sir. may be right. elected to each. So Okay. So putting that aside, are you familiar with any other um, charters or election law where we categorize any by age. Um, any other um, limit who can serve by age? Voters by age group on elected office, select boards. Uh, I don't know. I'll give you the short answer and then a three part longer answer. Okay. <laughs> short answer, I'm not. Okay. Three part longer answer. I was prepared for you to ask that question because you so often, as an astute member, ask me if there are other charters doing the same thing as the charter we're looking at. So in the future, I will be able to answer those questions because I have been creating a spreadsheet that categorizes every single charter section in Title 24 now. So that when you ask, we will be able to do a comprehensive search on the iPad for that section. And it will list what charters contain similar sections. I feel bad. <laughs> As Betsy has seen and have checked in on, in I am very pleased to put on my headphones and work on my charter spreadsheet. Uh, <laughs> so the final part of the longer answer is that there are qualifications that are put around certain appointments. And you see them all the time when commissions and boards are being established. So I'm not aware of any that require that, for example, a 55-year-old from AARP be appointed to a certain board. But I am aware that certain appointments come with contingencies, that the appointment shall be made uh, from an individual who is a member of 
the justice community. He shall be a member of the bar, for example. Those are typically appointed. Correct. Thank right. you. Nelson? Yeah. My question was based on what I heard from Rob was in your answer. Does that mean, I'm, I know what you just said about the school board. What if three of them ran for a select board mm -hmm. if, if this was to pass? Would they all be able to take seats on the select board? Uh, there is no limitation built here. I mean, the cap is put on the um, school board and Union High School number six board members. There's no limit put elsewhere in the charter. Can I make yeah, a response to that question? I think you have to give the voters some credit for thinking through their choices and and who might be the best person to to uh, represent the, their interests on the select board. So I think we can't eliminate the the um, intelligence of the voters in whom they would choose. And it's Nelson, my response to that is you can't limit the intelligence of some of the 16 and 17 and 18 year olds we have out there. I, I know personally the one that I served with on the SDSU board, if they so chose to run for a select board seat, they'd get my vote. Yeah. So it, it, I think it, uh, if people want to run, whatever the age, if this goes through, then it's up to the people to decide. Mm -hmm. I agree, but there could be some people that very well could serve there. And probably serve well. Questions? <laughs> Not a question, but just a comment to expand off what Nelson said. I also personally agree, emphatically agree, that the voters have intelligence and enough common sense to hopefully vote in a qualified, and I use the word qualified in quotes, person to, to serve, whether he's 16, 17, 18, whatever. Now, 16 or 17 year old voting and holding public office is very new to me. I have not yet formed an opinion on that. I'm considering it. Um, but putting that aside, I really think the voters should elect the people that are tasked with the responsibility to represent them, whether it be on the town level of, of select board or, or a school board or on the state level as a representative or a senator. I, I firmly believe that. In fact, I said that at a previous select board meeting last Monday night. <clears throat> so I do agree with, with what you said, that you know the voters have common sense and can make intelligent decisions. Um, and again, I haven't totally formed my opinion as for 16, 7 year olds, but but again, having said about the voters making the decision, this is Brattleboro, and in Brattleboro, if Brattleboro, in my opinion, voted this in where they were certainly interested in having 16 and 17 year olds, then that's a Brattleboro decision. And, and, and that was one of my concerns before that if the 16 and 17 year olds in the state, <clears throat> if the I believe the towns should have the ability to make the decisions. Again, the voters making the decisions on what happens in their town. I'll shut up now. Bless you. All right. Thank you to Tucker for running us through the bill language, and thank you to the three members from Brattleboro for being with us for a, a good. <coughs> Thank you for your consideration. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.